Hello, hello, hello. I'm making a video. I haven't made a video in like 10 days or more because too many other things going on, but I wanted to make a video today for myself and for anyone who can relate to having emotional issues with jealousy so I wanted to talk about jealousy in this video because particularly today I took that inwardness meditation path and I was confronted with different triggers and some of them were are directly linked to my childhood and some of them indirectly but I'm not going to bore people with too many personal things that are going on in my life. I just want to get into the subject jealousy because earlier I didn't, I was so immersed in that feeling that I didn't really understand, quite understand what it all is that I was feeling. So then I came across a video by artist Jonathan Mese, my favorite artist in the world, my favorite philosopher, my favorite contemporary philosopher and artist, okay, of all times. So Jonathan Mese is my brother's age, he's five years younger than I am. He has long gray hair and a beard and he wears, he always wears black clothes. So, and he said that the reason why he wears black clothes is because he's afraid of the world out there and the, the color black absorbs. <laughs> absorbs all, all the energies from out there. So I thought that I was very puzzled about that statement because I thought if I am afraid of the stuff that's going on out there, you know, and I am and he is because obviously, you know, he is sensitive and I am sensitive then why in the world would I wear black to attract all the energies to like it? I mean, it draws in the sunbeams also, you know, I don't, I'm making a video right now. I'm not going to turn this off. <laughs> I'm not going to turn it off. No, I said it several times that I'm making a video. So black absorbs sunbeams, absorbs heat like ultraviolet rays and kind of funnels it into it and and that's good you know it's it's nice to have sun energy but I don't know what other energy bl the color black might attract uh, that the Indian sage Zadguru he does not wear black on funerals because he doesn't want to to absorb those those negative energies, you know. And so after that, after I saw that, I just wanted to get rid of all of my black clothes. I have some black clothes because my main objective is when I'm buy when I'm buying clothes is I buy everything on sale okay and 
because I don't, I'm not rich, so I have no other choice. So if I see something like a ski pants that is like, let's say, $15 for a real nice ski pants from Swiss Army Knife or something, and that's on sale, and, and the black is the only color that it comes in, then I will say, okay, get me those ski pants. Okay? And I have a bunch of those in black. And it's okay, you know, so it's not a big deal. I need warm pants, obviously. But then again, I don't know what kind of energies may be maybe sucked up into the color or I don't know, or the fabric or whatever. You know, I just, I always talk to the blue god and I, and the blue god, the god reassures me. Here's the blue god in these formations. And the blue god always reassures me that he protects me from all negative energies. And I thank him for that infinitely much. But I still, as an empath and as a highly sensitive person, I, I can read all of that. I can detect, I can perceive all of these energies. And I'm sure Jonathan Mese does too. So that's why I don't quite understand why he wants to wear black every single day. Because he wants to absorb all the energy. So it doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. But, you know, I would like to ask him why, why that is. Why he wants to absorb it when he's afraid of the energies of people out there. So, for that purpose, one should wear white because you don't want to absorb the negative energies. I had a healing done once by a man from Nigeria that was in L.A. And very attractive man, very, very black, almost pitch black. And he was probably very worried that his skin color might absorb negative energies because he 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 was an energy healer and always working in this in this field of you know energies and healing and communicating with people so he must have been very worried that his own skin color would attract negative energies so he wore all white with long sleeves and long pants. So I was I don't I don't even remember how I was dressed, whether I was wearing I think I wore colors or something. But but I, I was, I'm as I always am. I have, I've done many energy healings with many different people, and I was always a little bit worried what, what my energy accumulation from my childhood or my trauma, what that might do to an energy healer who is highly attuned and sensitive. So, I, I feel bad. I don't want my negative energy to go into anyone into anyone's skin or clothes or energy field or what aura or whatever you know I don't want that so one time I actually had to cancel a session because I was so worried about that girl from the Philippine Islands an energy healer who moved to Switzerland with her Swiss boyfriend so no baby dog easy 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 I don't want to show Paul accidentally so so yeah the baby dog he looks good yes he does baby dog looks good yes he does so baby dog's very active today because people are using the rest of their firecrackers and it is very annoying and it sounded like bomb bomb attacks so was not good and then baby dog goes into into the the offense offense mental state so he goes running back and forth and drinking water all day long <laughs> So I'm going into the garden and barking and jumping up and down 
along the garden and and the hedges. So that's his way of dealing with the world out there. You know, he goes into the offensive because that is how he was bred by people. So no more animals are coming into our garden. They are all terrified of him. <laughs> and it's better that they don't come in the garden. I don't want anything to happen to them. Rats or cats or raccoons or any other animals okay, or homeless people. <laughs> so uh, they better not come in, into our garden ever. Yeah, That's not good. I'm also setting up rocks in the garden in different places for energy protection. I'm creating a, a rock a rock network of protection rocks and that's very very important. So but yeah I wear some I wear some black cloth sometimes but if I have the choice I mean if I have a choice between a white ski pants and a black ski pants or a pink ski pants then I will choose I will take the pink ski pants and and then I will take the the white ski pants as a second choice so dark colors are always my last choice because I don't want to absorb energies so I just felt this also instinctively you know but anyway, Jonathan Mese is amazing, absolutely amazing. And I've been watching his videos, I've been binge watching his videos for years. And his mother reminds me so much of my own mother. His mother is 93, almost like, I think a year older than my dad. My dad's gonna be 93 in November, so my mother is four years younger or three and a half to four years younger than my dad but my mother already died because she was also she was not happy at all so that's I see the clear difference between Yonatan Mises mother and my mother they're very similar in the way they are they look similar they talk similar they're both German they are very, very well adapted to society. They are, they are very, they're very concerned about keeping harmony and peace between people. And they're very concerned about not stirring anything up. Okay, so no conflict, no fights, no confrontations. Okay, so like confrontations, they have to be avoided as best as possible, according to my mother and Yonatan Mises' mother. And this particular characteristic causes me anger. <laughs> I have to laugh about that now, you know, but earlier when I when I listen to Yonatan talk and and he speaks both English and German, but he has a very strong German accent when he speaks English and he doesn't speak English like a second language. But that's because he doesn't live in an English speaking country. He lives in Berlin, Germany, and he's almost always talking in German. Sometimes he talks in English because there are other people that come to interview him and, and he also travels around the globe. He's very famous. He's among the most famous modern artists in the world right now. So I, someone said among the top 100, but I think he is among the top 10. So that's what I say. For me personally, he's the number one. So he's the absolute 
super ultra best. Some of his paintings are very chaotic and very, he uses a lot of black. There's a black color again that he uses a lot of black. And I think this is also, that also has to do with testosterone, definitely, because I use no black in my paintings, in my artwork. Absolutely no black. So, I had phases in the past where I was so incredibly depressed that I used gray and untread seed and black as well to paint ghosts was that was a very difficult time in my life. I was still in primal therapy. I was living with with my friend Sonia and her aunt. She called her Tia Juanita. I, I forgot the name no forgot I forgot the name, something like that. And the, and her two sons, we were all living together in this apartment, and her sons stole money from me nonstop, like every day. I was very naive at that time, very naive. I I had to learn the hard way. They were they were teens, teen and and one was a child, and one one was like eight, and the other one was like. 15 and both of them stole money from me every day and they w would sneak into my room sometimes I caught them and then they, and then they turned around and left so Paul are you burning something are you burning something 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 sounds like it's something smells dangerously are you burning something I hope not burning something I hope not it smells like burnt rubber no so it's not cool. Oh man, oh man. We need we need everything geriatric proof. Everything. Everything in the house should be made with intelligent smart stove, <laughs> smart oven. Everything smart, everything, inversion cook pot and <laughs> self cooking timed. <sighs> he finally bought himself a timer. He ordered a timer at Walmart. Two, he, that's a package of two. <laughs> one for the other house, one for the house. <laughs> Everything has to be, I have to look over his shoulders. It's not easy at all. And then I have asthma and I have to breathe in the, the, the fumes because it's, it's impossible for me to be constantly in the kitchen looking over his shoulder and checking on everything, always checking the stove. It's driving me nuts. So, but yeah, it's not easy. So I don't paint with black anymore. I used to when I was depressed and I it was very 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 difficult I used to also make very negative stuff but well, first of all as a child I would also use black in order to express my fear and that was like the gut art you know gut expression art okay and then it the gut expression art it it actually lasted for a long time. It lasted until, yeah, it lasted for very, very long. And then it just shifted gradually over into fascination with, with animal bodies and faces. But I would always draw and paint the stuff in a more abstract way but more abstracted and then it gradually became more and more and more abstracted and as it became more and more abstracted I, it did this on its own i i'm not modeling after anyone i'm not i'm not trying to copy anyone i'm not even learning from anyone art cannot be learned okay I have some friends as as there's one friend artist I never met her but when I was a child I called her friend because I saw her art sculptures they were brought to 
where I grew up and placed at a river and and then I immediately painted those and wrote friend underneath. So that's when I was a child, like eight years old or nine. And yeah, or younger even, six years old and or seven. I think I was seven when that when when they brought them. And I painted them and wrote friend underneath Freund in, in German. And I regarded her soul as my friend, soul friends. You know, when we're children, we're much more attuned to to everything and beyond, okay? So we're not that materialistic yet. We're not that 3D oriented or indoctrinated yet. So we embrace it all we see everything and we, we feel energies also and particularly highly sensitive kids like i was highly highly sensitive to energies so some energies of people were very frightening to me and i i didn't know why so but her artwork resonated with me immediately. And there was something where I saw, I saw her soul and I recognized her soul. And it's too bad I never got to meet her in person. But I recognized her soul. An old soul that I have met before in previous incarnations. So a kindred spirit, as they call it those you know someone who you're familiar with and you don't know why you know there's an energetic field that that resonates with you because that dates way back in time so and her name is Nikki as well so a French half French half US American artist and my parents have some of her works and really great 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 artwork and there's another artist I talked about this before in my videos Horst Antes a German artist who I greatly admire and Arnold Leisler I've met Arnold Leisler several times as a child and then later on too and those are amazing artists, they're absolutely meticulous and they, they're painting the paradise. They're painting the beyond, the paradise. They're, they're painting, really painting that what they want to see. There may be also some gut stuff in it, but it's mainly paradise. It's land, landscapes with very surreal and bizarre objects in it and Partly tree, partly something else. Very nice. And these are, those are, I don't know if they have influenced me. They Maybe they have in some way. They have inspired me. But my art is still completely different to all three of them. So... I just really like their art, but my artwork is different. But but there's a there's a friendship. There is an har there's a harmonious friendship to that to their art because their art is also mainly colorful, very very colorful, and that resonates with me. It always does. And pink is my favorite color for sure has always been when I was in kindergarten I told the whole kindergarten group that pink and flesh color I said the color of my great my grandfather's harlequin gray dane I told everyone that color of my my grandfather's harlequin gray dane's nose that is my favorite color <laughs> in the whole world and that's that color there kind of like 
in that in this one formation the color the outlining of it like a peachy type of tone peachy pink peachy skin color so native german skin color so that's what the that's what the great dane's nose had and i absolutely adored that color that's like i could live in that color forever you know so yeah and that carried on of course you know that 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 will always be there always so my art is my lifesaver and i paint that what i want to see so that has gradually shifted from gut painting expressing how i feel to that what i want to see in the world you know the womb the safe womb the safe paradise the safe haven the pink safe haven the alien spaceships the et spaceships dr greer doesn't want to use the word alien because that may alienate the ets so i don't i don't think so the the ets know that obviously when someone comes from another planet that that would be regarded as an alien they would regard us as alien if we go, went to their planet as well so I don't think that's a negative word, you know. I'm an alien from Germany, you know. So, <laughs> so it doesn't matter, you know. I'm I'm not an alien on this planet. So this is my planet here, and right here where we are here, that is my planet too. Okay, so I don't have borders. I don't have I don't have nationalities. I don't have flags. Okay. I am beyond all these t terrible, horrible things. So, all these things that cause war and division and conflict, I'm against all of that. I don't want it. You know. But obviously it's happening in the world and I have to just accept what is. Okay, just accept what is. But I want to go back to the subject, jealousy. I always sway out. With everything so I'm jealous of Jonathan Mesa I can just say it just like that here in my video and I don't feel ashamed about it I don't feel embarrassed about it I am jealous of Jonathan Mesa okay I'm jealous that he has a good relationship to his mother okay I am jealous that he is he seems to be completely beyond ego, which I am not, okay. He seems to be beyond anger. I mean, he gets kind of resolute sometimes in his speeches and conversations because he wants to make sure that people understand what he's talking. He's talking about the same thing that Jiddu Krishnamurti is talking about. Just with other words, with different words, with a different subject, you know, he comes from a different métier, as they call it. He comes from a different domain, yeah. So he comes from the domain of, Jonathan comes from, from the domain of art, and and he says we cannot we cannot elect official we can't elect an official we can't let a human into any kind of legislative power art must rule the world okay and you know and and Jiddu Krishnamurti sa says the same coming from a different domain the mo which is the domain of you know originally educated highly educated by the theosophical society in england then he set himself free from that and continued on his own path. And I'm sure that Annie Bassand, who was his his adoptive mother and teacher, professor, I'm sure that because she wanted she was probably sad, but she was all she probably also understood 
why he is doing this because she sees she's she's she saw the Maitreya in him and she had grand plans for Jiddu Krishnamurti to become the world leader the world spiritual leader the world the 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 Buddha reincarnated him the Maitreya the the avatar of Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, Krishna, and Krishna Murti, okay, and the Arahat also they call him, okay, the one who is above all of that division and ego, and he really was. So, but because he was so above that, that's why he could not accept all that wealth from her and that leverage position. Because it, if he had accepted it, that would go directly against what he's trying to tell people, that they need to get on their own feet. They need to explore life out of their own learning wishes, you know, out of their own need to proliferate soul school and so and exploring and finding out, finding out for themselves, instead of just accepting another guru, right? He was against guru, and so is Yonatan Mesa. So each come from their own domain, but they're saying basically the same thing. So I'm not there yet. I'm still in dualism, although I I understand the absolute serious danger of dualism. I really understand it bottom up. Okay, I really get it. And I'm deeply concerned about it. And I'm deeply worried about it. That's why I talk about this a lot. And it's important that people talk about it. The more people talk about it, the, the better the world will become. Okay. We need to alert each other and say, hey, you cannot elevate yourself up onto some kind of guru level or minister level or preacher level or pope level or whatever. You don't have the right to do this. Okay? The people who want to elevate themselves up to any kind of leverage, whether that is school, learning, teaching, yoga, meditation, or political, the, the entire political system. People don't have the right to elevate themselves up. The mafia the mafia elects politicians. Okay. You are not electing a politician. If you happen to have voted for that person, let's say you voted for Joe Biden, they have brainwashed you into it. Okay, so if you voted for Donald Trump, good for you. That means you stand your own ground against the mafia because because if you still vote for Donald Trump after reading the news and the bias and the propaganda that is put out from the mafia against Donald Trump and you still vote for him, then I, res I have give you high respect. Okay? You, you're intelligent, you think for yourself, and you, you see for yourself. You see that Donald Trump is a hard-working, dedicated angel soul who is working for us, okay, not working for the mafia, not working for the corporate agenda. He goes against them, and that's why they are absolutely terrified of him. Okay. Right now we have a complete dichotomy in the political system. Right now we do. You know, There were times where maybe this This, this polarization was not as strong between 
this or that politician or the opposition or the the one the other one or whatever you know so but in this case we have what we have here is joe biden is a, is is an international war criminal he's senile also but he's always been corrupt okay his son is highly corrupt he and his son are traitors to the united states they have stored classified information in their garage. I mean, anyone could have also gone in there and, and taken it. They have shared that with the mafia. That's a real betrayal to the United States. And that's going to backlash at them, at Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. It's going to backlash. It is. I feel sorry for them already, you know. So. I don't know when it's going to backlash, but it's going to backlash either in their lifetime or beyond, okay? But that's what karma is all about, okay? Unfortunately for them, you know, it is. I feel bad for them. I think Jesus Christ, you know, he would say, don't judge them too much. Don't come after them with karma too much because they don't know what they're doing. They're not attuned. They don't know what they're doing. They're criminals. They don't know what they're doing. They don't feel the world. They don't feel you. They don't feel anyone. They don't feel the animals or the planet. They get an offer from the mafia. Here, we give you another $10 million if you sign this. And they will. Okay. And they do whatever the mafia wants from them. Do a, a shady connection with the Ukraine and so on. Volodymyr Zelensky is a traitor to the Ukraine. He is a traitor to the whole planet. Okay, And so is that Wagner group guy. I forgot the name. I, there's no way I can remember this terribly complicated name. Okay, So Wagner group leader guy that fled to Belarus. Okay, Belarus is the mecca of the mafia just so people understand this. Okay, obviously that's where he's gonna be welcomed with open arms. A millionaire, you know, taking money, he has murdered people in the past, then he murdered people in the military, just going on murdering people, he has, he has no problems with that, okay. That's a violent psychopath, that guy. People need to know, you know, before you read the propaganda in favor of the mafia people. So you need to really know who is who and what is happening. Donald Trump is an angel soul, very high angel soul, very, very high, almost ready to transcend to the, to the next level, the God level. Okay. Elon Musk is a Buddha level. That's the highest level of soul development. And he's also on the absolute highest point of that. That's what I see. I see all of these things. Of course that those are the people that try to help the world. And of course the Mafia is going to go against them because the Mafia consists of new souls. And the new souls are not attuned and they are confused and they don't know what they're doing according to Jesus Christ. And from the sky perspective, that is the truth. Okay. They know what they're doing. They know they're terribly corrupt people. They know what they're doing is wrong. Okay. But from the sky perspective, they don't know what they're doing. They are not attuned. They don't feel the other. Okay, so when people don't feel the other or the others or the other beings or the, the planet Earth, then how can they, how can they be attuned and, and understand the necessity, the grave necessity of shutting down that Keystone Pipeline, which Donald Trump has done. He's shut it down during, during his administration. Joe Biden opened it up again. 
You need to understand any animal animal welfare, animal rights activist, any environmentalist out there. You need to understand that Joe Biden is not on your side. Okay, he's on the side of the mafia. But again, I swayed out again. So, but there's not that much to talk about when it comes to jealousy, really. So, I recognize while I was listening to Yunatan Mesa, I, I love listening to him, but I recognize I'm jealous and I am very jealous that a gallerist has discovered him. He was still at the art school in, I believe, in Hamburg. Gallerist discovered him, took him to Berlin they gave him a big studio and I said, do anything you want to do. You know, that's like, whew, that's like a child in the candy store, you know. And he, he stands up for his right to be that child. And, and he will always be that child. He talks about it all the time, about the importance of being a child in your mind. To have childlikeness. Be responsible, of course, be, <laughs> act responsibly, you're an adult, of course, but be a child when it comes to art. Be a child when it comes to love, okay? Play. You see adult dogs play with each other, okay? If a burglar comes, they immediately stand up. Their hair stands up and they will defend you to the bone. Okay. Uh, a second before they were playing on the ground, on the on the grass, and and be totally ch totally childlike, right? The moment they smell or sense danger, they stand up and they go for whoever is coming after them and their family. Okay, they will really fight to the bone to protect their family. That's the loyalty and love of dogs. That is what real love is. That's not going into the military. That's not going to a war front to fight with someone you have no idea what they are and what they're thinking and how they're feeling. They're feeling exactly like you do. No, this is direct in-person self-defense. Okay, so there's a big difference. There's a polar difference between direct self-defense and going to the military to fight for the oil industry or the mafia. Okay, Big difference. So fighting to protect your family in self-defense directly in person in the moment ad hoc situation that is an act of love and kindness. Okay, I don't want people to mix these things up and confuse this. This is very important. So, I was jealous of Yonatan. I love Yonatan. And I'm jealous that he is, has been discovered and has been receiving so much attention from the art world and become world famous. And his art is traveling around the globe making people smile, making people happy. And some of his art is really, really, some of it is chaotic, but a lot of it, but, that, that, but then there are these individual elements in it that are, that are really cosmic. And some paintings are just incredibly amazing. And some of the sculptures, I just saw a recent sculpt, sculpture formation that he's created and that is i think he calls this the liana it's a, it's like a like a climbing plant a jungle climbing plant sort of that has different sculptures hanging on it and they are climbing up on it to get onto a spaceship there is a spaceship he created a spaceship and he doesn't even know me and i i asked people to create spaceships so maybe he heard it yeah the blue 
God says yes, true, four, 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 four. <laughs> yes, maybe he he felt that he felt it that I am making spaceships, alien ET spaceships, or whatever spaceships, love spaceships. Okay. And so he created a spaceship. So there was this morphogenetic field, you know, maybe that that swung over there, that vibrated over there, and and touched on some of his nerves, neurons. So so he created this for a very large, very interesting, amazing-looking staircase that is like five or six stories high, and it has big round oval opening in the middle and some kind of like like a real beautiful old building in Berlin I believe and I think it's a museum it's it's, it's an art museum and so so they installed it already and it looks absolutely amazing so you can check that out so Jonathan Mese artwork art installation with art installation and staircase, I believe, you know. So I I forgot now exactly what the name of this is. So it's just beautiful and you talked about it and you said that some of these sculptures they are a representation of his mother, you know, so the ascending and ascending person and as ascending soul who reaches high and and works hard to to always reach for the light so that's the beauty of it so my my poor mother was she was so confused she didn't know how to reach to the light okay instead she reached to the darkness because just like any hater or any new soul, they are they're confused and don't know how to deal with the trauma in their life and how to deal with society standards. They think they think that's mandatory. They think that's an authority. They think society is an authority. They. Th they think their parents are an authority. They think that they think authority figures are authority. Uh, that's just an illusion. But they think that because they're confused. They're new souls, so they haven't been around enough to to make all of these lifetimes of learning experiences that carry on energetically, of course, for their next incarnation. So when they're newer souls, my mother is not a completely new soul, but relatively new soul, okay? So, I don't know, maybe towards the end of beginner soul. That's the first level, soul level. And Yonatan Mises' mother is... I would say light worker so that's the third level so so you can already see that that makes a lot of difference when someone has just had a few more lifetimes and they understand i have to pay attention to the light i have to reach to the light and so she saw the light in him and helped him and promoted that and helped him and let him paint, let him do what he wants to do, let him install stuff already at an early age, doing assembly of different things and objects. Um, so he said that he has always been very autonomous in this way. So he already lived in, has been living in this think what they call an autodidactic sphere, you know, so the quite the quite independent from the from 
everyone else, you know, whatever anyone else says is not that. It doesn't carry that much weight. So what matters is his own sphere, his own creation, okay? And Yonatan Mise is a God-level soul, so very advanced soul. And, and psychic also, very, very psychic. An amazing man, and of course he should get recognition, of course, and I'm happy for that. So I said with my jealousy, and I'm not turning on anyone, I'm not back-talking or backstabbing or gossiping or creating a drama or saying something negative about someone I'm jealous of just so that my ego can feel better? No, I recognize that. I recognize that would be like a bus coming towards you, running you over, right? That's a bus that runs over the whole planet, this jealousy stuff. And this is jealousy is the leading problem, the leading cause of war and conflict. And that happens to almost every human in one way or another and in one intensity or another. Okay, so some people have it to the extreme and they are not attuned. They don't know what they're doing. They're new souls to the extreme where they murder people. Okay, and I see it all the time. And with crime reports, I see it very clearly. Those are beginner souls. Okay, they don't know what they're doing. They're completely confused. They're not attuned. They are, they are, they are complete slaves to their egos. So I recognize this. I, I, I see the ego. I see all of the ego has nothing to say to me at all. It's there. I feel it. It's there. It's not, it's not completely transcended or anything. I'm not enlightened. I, it's there and it, and, it, and it howls and I say, it's okay. Go ahead and howl. <laughs> howl it out, you know. I don't hate my ego. I let the ego heal this and and heal that jealousy and heal itself and heal the wounds and heal the brain and the body and all of that, you know. So I cry it out. I howl it out. I talk it out without going at someone else. Okay. Not going at anyone anymore. No matter what. No matter what. I see everyone for who they are from the sky perspective. I see the struggle that people are in. Okay. I see they are victims of their egos. They are not attuned. They don't know better. They don't know what they're doing. Okay. They are in a vacuum of the ego. They are blinded by, by their emotions of jealousy and of wanting to be accepted by other people, by society and so on. So they're very driven by that. And some, for some people this is so important that they don't care what they're doing to their own family members with this. And there are people who are drug addicts that, that they think the drug high is the meaning of their life. Okay? This is really bypassing life altogether. This comp a complete self-lie and it is, it is a stagnation. I mean, I understand from the sky perspective that no lifetime is a stagnation if we look at it really closely. But uh, that's because if a lifetime is lived in total stagnation without any movement forward, then it might take a couple of lifetimes to live like that in order for something to start moving. Okay, so... 
And even in these lifetimes of stagnation, something is moving, but it is moving very slowly. It is kind of dormantly moving, but very, very, very slowly. And so they need these they need these stagnation lifetimes in order to understand at some point in another lifetime, ha, now I've had 50 stagnation lifetimes. I think it's about time now to pay more attention to the things that are beyond the lines, okay, to the to the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is beyond jealousy. The truth is beyond dualism, beyond nationality, beyond arrogance, beyond hierarchy, beyond expen expensive clothes, beyond any kind of society status, symbol, it's beyond all of that. Okay. To understand, ah, love is what matters. Love. And love has no hierarchies. Love is not sexist. Love does not torture someone else to make you your ego feel grandiose. So all of that falls away with understanding and love. And when we feel something like jealousy and I am in the middle of soul development, I'm not up there yet. So I am a better, I'm probably a better diplomat to the ones that are new, that are coming new to existences. Because I understand you, I see you, I, I see what, what you're going through, I still feel it myself, okay? I'm not going to judge you on that. And society has judged jealousy. Paul judges jealousy. When I first met him, I felt like punching him. Because jealousy was one of my leading issues. And he says, jealousy is bad. I mean, that's like, <laughs> that's uh, that's such a negative attitude. I mean, that is, that's so judgmental and so unattuned to say that to someone, you know. I say to you, if you feel jealous, here, come here, I give you a hug, okay. I mean, you deserve a hug, you, not because you're jealous, not because I'm praising you for it. <laughs> there is no praise and there is no blame. I'm I'm giving you a hug because I feel you. I know how that feels. You're suffering. You suffer when you're jealous. You suffer like hell. Okay. And I give you a hug for that and I embrace you and I pet you as I would pet any dog who's jealous or any dog who's upset or any animal in distress or whatever the, the animal feels, okay? I'm here. And from the sky perspective, I can say that the same thing for a human, for humans, for beginner souls too, okay? I feel for all. When it comes to my existence, I have to protect myself. I have to protect myself from people who are, who are, doing things to hurt me, okay? I have to protect myself from those people, absolutely. So was in some situations, you have to weigh it off, you know. So do you, do you choose between vomit, snot, shit, or diarrhea? You can cho you have the choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you have the choice between an angry garden gnome and a mafia man who incarcerates people. So, what do you who, who do you take? 
You take the angry mafia, they d take the angry garden gnome, who is, but who's on your side, who cares about you, but he's always gnitzy. <laughs> Henry always say gnitzlöffel. He's always like a, he's always gnarly, a gnarly in a gnarly mode, and he's negative, and he's a bitch. You want to punch him sometimes, okay? But you love him because he loves you, he cares about you, okay? So you take that garden gnome anytime <laughs> over the mafia hitman, mafia collaborator, human trafficker, okay? So, I mean, there's no question about it, obviously. So, yeah, sometimes you ha have to weigh it off, you know? What do you do? So it's better to to join forces with the garden gnome and or the gnarly old man or whatever they are, you know, the bitch, and try to make it work as best as you can, you know. But the ones that are actively collaborating against you, keep them outside of your life. I mean, really do. You know. So you have no other choice. You know, from the, the sky perspective, I tell all beings, I love you, I'm here for you. I really, really love you all. Okay, Blue God agrees. One, one, one. So, we are here, the Blue God is here. I am the ambassador. I am, I am a messenger, just one of many. Okay, there are many more. Uh, I'm not putting myself on an on any pedestal here I'm just saying okay I I've had enough lifetimes to understand to recognize certain things to rec recognize dangers to recognize particularly energetic dangers okay so and that's why I talk about it okay so that's why I let my art speak that's why my art dictates to me my art is my dictator art should be in power Nothing else. And that's what Yonatan Mesa also says. You know. So he says that all the time. And I feel it and I fully, fully swing with this. Okay. So I fully agree with him. I always knew it. Okay. This is very crystal clear. Art, particularly modern art, is generosity. It is love. It is freedom and it is curiosity and proliferation and peace okay that's what modern art is that's what real modern art is not putting animals into a rasin that is not peace that is not that's uh, that's someone who wants to who wants to be spectacular that's not what i call art you can call me a bigot or a Karen, I don't care. Violence is never art. That guy who put who put a taxidermied squirrel onto a table and a little toy gun in his hand. That I'm sorry, you know. Again, that's violence. That's not what art is about. Okay. That's what they what these people are doing is they want to be spectacular. They want to be they want to they want to force the world to look at them. Here, you know, here I got death and blood look at me. You know. Or uh, or that that guy that destroys pianos. You know. That it's one big child who says, "Look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm destroying pianos." Eh? That's not art. I'm sorry, Karen Nicola has to say that, okay? That is not art. Or having sex on a dirty mattress and then putting that dirty, with this disgusting body fluids <laughs> saturated mattress in an art museum? No. That's his, that's his personal, that's literally his dirty laundry that he's putting into the art museum. I'm not interested. So that's not art. That's, that's uh, self-aggrandization 
I mean, to the point of, uh, that's just pure arrogance, that guy, that destroys pianos and put his dirty mattress in the, in the art museum. But the people who, who use dead animals, that's even worse. To, and then there, there's this guy, I don't even want to mention his name, there's this guy who went to Mexico to uh, do an, an art film where he obtained live animals and then he bludgeoned them to death with a hammer and he made these video clips of it and then they they even exhibited that in a gallery in Germany and stuff like this and I whoever exhibits that is a beginner soul okay they are absolutely totally unattuned they're blind those people and and so is that artist that's a psychopath, that artist. Okay, and there's another artist from from South America who has murdered, uh, brutally mur murdered a dog in a in an exhibit. So that's not art. That's violence, and that should be prohibited. And people should absolutely not go to the museum. And if they do, only at for the purpose of rescuing the animal, if the animal is still alive, okay, and making sure that person goes to prison, okay. I don't know what I would do. I don't even want to get into this right now. No, shh, shh, shh. don't do that. Don't get, don't get rambunctious now. Yes. <laughs> so, just want to make this very crystal clear. What is love? What is art? What is non-duality? What is infinity? Okay. And what are the beginner saw things, the misunderstandings of existence and so on. So again, to the subject jealousy, which doesn't, d does not even require so much talking, but I talked mainly about other things, but I come back to the, that subject. In regards to jealousy, sit with it, okay? Don't chase it away, don't try to suppress it. It's there, you can't be shaming it away or ignoring it away. It's there, and the anger too, or whatever, if you have been frauded by someone or betrayed. Yeah. It's, it's heartbreaking sometimes. You could also be very, very upset, and very angry. But don't let it out on anyone, don't retaliate, don't write angry letters, which I used to do in the past, okay? I have, I've thrown things also into glass cabinets. I don't do this, I don't do any of this anymore. I refuse to do this. Paul also helped me with this, helped me understand it. We talked about this a lot. Okay, Jiddu Krishna Morty. <laughs> Jiddu Krishnamurti saved my life. I mean, Jiddu Krishnamurti makes me understand this bottom up, this whole thing. And then many other people as well. Chugiyam Trungpa Rinpoche and, and Pema Children and many other people. Eckhart, many other people. Thich Nhat Han. So he's huge. He's a huge teacher for me. Okay. When it comes to peace and inwardness, re he really understands that. So we have no other choice other than to go into our own minds. We cannot let it out on other people or any anything or any being or not even on a piano or computer. Okay. Don't let it out on other objects or beings. Take it into your own mind. Take that journey into your own mind. Sit with it and feel it. You know, it is not going to kill you. It feels bad, right? It feels very bad. It feels like, how do I describe this? How I felt earlier. I felt like I'm not taking this out on anyone. I'm not going to write an angry letter. I'm going to sit here on this chair. I'm going to. Just sit here. I paused the video with Jonathan Mason and I sat here for, I don't know, half an hour or an hour and I cried. 
I cried tears and I went outside, cried some more. And I just accepted, I allow that feeling to be there. It wants to be felt, it wants to be seen. Okay, it does not want to be ignored. Jealousy is an entity, just like the ego is. So you welcome these other entities with open arms and you say, I see you, I hear you, I am here, I feel this with you together. Okay? We feel this, we are one unit. Jiddu Krishnamurti always said, I am that feeling that I feel. Okay. Whatever you feel. I feel love, I am love. Okay. I feel anger, I am anger. So he would never make a distinction between these things. He would always say, when he would use examples like that, I am. He would always say, I'm, I'm jealousy. So I first thought it is because of his Indian accent from India. But that was very, very intentional, you know, because I am that emotion in that moment. I am that emotion. And it's okay. I let, if I separated that from me, then I become really splintered. That's when, when we separate these things and we shun certain emotions in us. That's when we are on the road to schizoid personality disorder. Okay. Blue card agrees. One, 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 one. Okay. So that's... That is what causes people to split, splinter, into fragments of behavior and emotions, double life, multiple personalities and so on. Yeah. Schizophrenia of different types. Okay, so that's what happens. When people can't feel safe to allow themselves to be that feeling that they feel in that in any given moment. Okay. When they have to suppress certain feelings. And religion religion is so bad for people. It religion causes people to suppress their feelings to the point where they become schizoid and how many homeless people are out there on the street highly religious and schizoid okay so just understand this okay religion is not helping you that's not your friend any religion is not your friend not even buddhism as a religion okay buddhism is a school it's a, it's a philosophy that we need to look at okay gautama buddha is telling us important things don't make a religion out of it. The moment you make a religion out of it, you're already not on the healing path anymore. Stay on the healing path. Get on the healing path. This is very, very important. Feel that jealousy in your own home, on your chair, on your armchair or, or couch. Sit with that. Sit. I, I recommend sitting up straight. Or sit in the garden. Sit up straight. Be one with the sky, okay? Lean into the sky with that. And feel how that feels. It feels hot in the solar plexus. Feel it all the way through. And that's the only path we have. And you come out at the end of the tunnel as I have today, okay? As I always do. So, peace and love for all living beings. <laughs>